Welcome to our video on solving indeterminate beams, support reactions, using kinematics, and also our deflection table so that we don't actually have to integrate. We can actually use the pre-solved equations of the elastic curves right out of the deflection tables. So if we look, what we have here is we have what looks like it would be a simply supported beam, a pin at A, and a roller at C with a uniform load, but there's this extra roller at B. So when we draw our free body diagram, we can see we have one too many reactions to be statically determinant. Of course, we still want to do our statics. And so if we start doing our statics on this, we would immediately see that AX equals to zero. And then we can write expressions for both uh, summing moments at A and summing moments at C. But we're going to get that we have two equations with three unknowns. And we know that's not useful for us. So we want to actually take advantage again of kinematics to help us solve this problem. And so this is now introducing kinematics with the redundant force method. As a reminder, kinematics is the geometry of the motion. And in this case, the motion is the deformation. And so let's take a quick look at the deformation. We can see it would have just been a big smile from A to C, but with that roller at B, it gets pushed back up so that we get zero displacement at B. Now, to add in this redundant force method, we're basically saying that the redundant, one of the extra supports is redundant. We don't need it for stability. So we could get rid of BY or we could get rid of CY and we could still be stable. So we're going to have these redundant forces. And then, so what we want to do is we're going to actually take this apart. We're going to use superposition. We say, let's just remove one of the redundant supports and now have a new beam that we solve that is determinate. But then we're going to take the same supports that make our determinate beam, create a new beam, and add our redundant support as a force to that. Add those together and make sure when we do, we force them to behave like the original beam. Seems like a lot. So let's choose BY as the redundant force and actually see what this would look like. So here I've taken away BY and I've drawn that first determinant beam with the original loading with BY missing. It's a nice statically determinant beam, but I'm going to add to that another beam with the exact same support con conditions, right? I've got a pin at A and a roller at C, and that's super important. I couldn't change this into a cantilevered beam as the second beam I'm adding it to. The supports have to match, and I'll add BY in now, that redundant reaction or support reaction. I'll add that in as a force. The original beam wants to sag down or smile, right? We'll call that beam one, and this new beam wants to smile. And so now we can actually mark their displacements at 2L over 3, where B is occurring. And if we go back up to our original beam, we see at 2L over 3, that displacement should be 0. So here's how the redundant force method works. We're going to add these together, right? We know we can use superposition, but we need to force beam 1 and beam 2 when we add them together. We want them to behave like the original beam. And the only place we know for sure we can enforce that compatibility is at 2L over 3. So we can say that beam 1 plus beam 2 equals the original beam if when I add the displacement from beam 1 at 2L over 3 to the displacement of beam 2, and notice I've labeled beam 1 and beam 2 down there at the bottom, so when I add the displacement, when I add them together, their displacements at 2L over 3, they should equal 0 or really whatever the original beam has at 2L over 3. And of course, our original beam we've already established is 0. And we'll circle that in just a sec here. So how are we going to do this? Well, we could do some integration or... Since we have the beam tables or the deflection tables, let's just get our displacements from there. So we can flip over and look at some deflection tables. 
and we're going to find the equations in terms of x. So our beam 1 is the lower circled beam that is simply supported with the uniform load, and we can see that the displacement is negative wx over 24ei times the quantity x cubed minus 2lx squared plus l cubed, where for the point load, uh, we're actually finding it right at x equals to a. So we could either use the elastic curve equation that's circled and plug in x equal to a, or in the deflection column, they've actually written out what it would look like when x equals a. Notice the sign though, we have a negative on here because this is deflecting down because p is pointing downward. Our by is pointing up to mimic the redundant support, so we will want to change that sign. So now we can go back and let's for b1 write that equation of the elastic curve, negative wx over 24ei in our second term, and we're going to plug in then x equal 2, 2l over 3, and solve, and we get a value, negative uh, 11 wl to the fourth over 972, and that should actually be ei on the bottom, that is not 972l, so we'll fill that in right now, that'll be 972 EI. And then we can use our equation for beam 2 when x equals to a, but we know that a is 2L over 3 and b would be L over 3. So let's go ahead and plug those values in and we solve, but this time we don't get a number, we get back out an answer in terms of by. But Remember, we're imposing compatibility and we're saying that those two, when they're added together, have to equal zero. So let's add them together, set it equal to zero, and we actually can find By. So we've immediately found the By reaction. We get a positive answer. So we know our upper direction is correct. And then the great thing is, is now that we know that, we can just put that right back into our statics equations and solve for ay and cy. And so we have now found all of our support reactions. So the big thing to remember with the redundant force method, you have to pick one of your redundant supports to take away. Right? It's got to be one of the redundant ones so that the beam is still stable. We can't take away ax because then we'd be in an unstable position. We then draw a new determinant beam with our original loading, right? And so we draw that new determinant beam, and then we're going to add to that a matching determinant beam as far as the support condition, so the pin at A and the roller at C, and then we add the redundant force. And then we have to look and say, okay, where do we know non-trivial information about either the slope or the displacement. And in this case, it's at 2L over 3 or at B. We know the displacement should be 0, but it's not 0 on either of our new beams. So then we can enforce compatibility. It doesn't work if you just say, well, they're all supposed to displace to 0 at A because all the beams have 0 at A. So it's not useful information, OK? So hopefully. Um, You'll take a little bit of time, stare at this, try a practice problem, and see how convenient it is to use the deflection tables with your kinematics to find statically indeterminate beam support reactions. Thanks for watching.